Hello and welcome to Classic Golf Clubs. Today we're focusing on one of the big names of UK golf and that's Ben Sayers, a Scottish company who are still in existence. And here's a fine picture of the man himself. So without further ado, let's have a look at the clubs of choice for today. In the usual way, we'll begin with the woods. Uh, this uh, set I'm playing today is nearly all Ben Sayers, apart from one club, which is uh, the driver. Uh, I, I've got a, a Ben Sayers um, one wood, but it belongs to a, a set of irons that I've got. So I, I think I'll hold that one in reserve in case I, I feature those irons at another time. But this is a, a very nice uh, persimmon driver. We can see it's got a nice grain on the top there. The uh, preferred horseshoe design going down to the toe. It's an aluminium insert. So can anybody guess what it is yet? Uh, if we look at the toe, it says tour model aluminium. And to give it away, I'll have a look on the sole. And it's a Titleist driver. Uh, oil hardened. I think I've featured this one before. Um, so there we go. Very nice club. So that's the driver. And then we'll move on to the three wood. This one is a Ben Sayers. It's a laminated head. Um, by the time this was produced, pretty much all, um, you, or sort of, I'd say 90% or more of UK woods were laminated maple. This one is no exception. It would have been nice to have some screws in there, but the insert's pretty firm. And we can see on the bottom there, Ben Sayers Scotland three wood. Shaft on this one is a Ben Sayers uh, own model, uh, regular, made in USA. So whether it's, I say Ben Sayers own, it obviously isn't. They've just got it uh, with their name on it. It's probably a true temper, although true temper usually put their mark on it. So I'm waffling really, I haven't got a clue who's made it. Uh, and the grip is uh, pretty good condition again. Who have we got on that one? It's an Avon grip. So if that's the woods. Now moving on to the irons and here are some of the irons um, <clears throat> I've not got the whole lot on there uh, this is uh, quite a, a full set one uh, to nine and I've also got the wedge I could do with the sand wedge um, so I'm on the lookout for that one but the clubs themselves are Ben Sayers and this model I call the registered 05064 which is what it says uh, at the top there 05064 Ben Sayers did quite a few clubs where they had a registered number on them um, so theoretically it should be easy to find a date for it but I think they used the design um, for several years or it's that, that um, name for the club uh, I've seen these with a, a, a hosel that tapers all the way down uh, with no ferrule and so I think it was certainly um, in production for 10 or 20 years maybe but looking at the clubs, they're quite an interesting set. If we start with the one iron, um, we can see, uh, if I look at the, the, the toe profile, it's quite a bit of a weight at the bottom, but it's very thin on the face um, and not too much weight at the top either. Uh, and, but if we compare that with the two iron, it looks very similar. But we're starting to see a little bit more thickness on the club. And if I then bring the three iron in, we can see that the profile is changing quite dramatically. We've lost some of the uh, flange on the bottom of the club. We've got a lot more weight um, in the centre of the club and pretty similar at the top. Then bringing the four iron in and it, it's sort of progressing in that, in that sort of fashion. Uh, if I bring in the 9 iron, we can see the, the extreme of that. We've now got a really big um, amount of weight at the bottom, very little at the top. Uh, so that it sort of gradually moved the weight around. Um, the head weight is obviously increasing as well, and that would uh, give you a, a consistent swing weight for the set, which is something that um, is, is quite important. Same with the, the one, two, three, four. Uh, the shaft length gets longer, so the head weight needs to be slightly lighter uh, on the one iron compared to the four iron, for instance, uh, in order to give you the same swing weight. 
nice bit of progression through the set there put those back hopefully in the right order and we can continue talking about the clubs themselves so it's a bladed design um, always has a little bit of weight at the bottom which is nice um, Ben Sayers with the Ben Sayers crown cleat mark one of the several that they use they also had a bird at one time um, stainless with the number on the bottom and on the hosel it says uh, handmade in Scotland the ferrule is black with uh, Ben Sayers seem to very frequently use in fact most of their clubs have this red white and blue um, banding at the top of the ferrule and when we get onto the putter we'll see that as well the shaft uh, none of the clubs have got a shaft label so I don't know what the shaft is I don't know what the flex is um, the grips that when I got them there were a mix of grips some were pretty poor some were not too bad but I've just put some cheap uh, eBay grips on here Tour Pride um, who makes these I've no idea but they're more than adequate for, for my use so that's the the irons then apart from the fact that as i say i don't have a sand wedge but i have managed to uh, i've managed to i've, I've got a, a ben sayers sand wedge here uh, this one's quite a bit older um, than the other clubs we can see this has got a shaft label and it's the um, true temper uh, rocket shaft and this would date it to the late 1950s i would imagine uh, it's been re-gripped not by me this one uh, another um, generic grip i think um, but the head itself a bit of a clean there some of the sound from the last time i used it um it's a, a ben sayers club let me bring that around so we can see it better so there we are ben sayers uh, signature and on the sole it's got the very attractive diagram of uh, an explosion going on and the name Exploder, E-X-P-L-O-D-A. Uh, it's got a, quite a bit of wear from use, but it says on the bottom, hand forged in Scotland and rustless. Uh, and it's got W1, it looks like there, whether it was a, a, a ladies club, I'm not sure. It is slightly shorter <coughs> than a, a normal... Um, sand iron so possibly it was uh, shafted for a lady although i wouldn't have expected them to have the uh, the green rocket band if it was uh, as far as the hosel sorry the ferrule goes exactly the same style as the other one as i say this was ben sayer's favorite so red white and blue uh, banding and we've got, just got a bit of knurl in there um, rather than handmade in scotland as was shown on the the iron set so that completes the irons let's move on to the putter here is the putter uh, probably uh, ben sayer's most famous model that went uh, in production for i don't know probably 50 years or more uh, first thing i point out is the very short ferrule red white and blue just keeping that theme running and the putter itself is uh, i hope some of you were able to guess Ben Sayers, uh, Benny Putter. It says mallet, I'm not sure why, because it's not a mallet at all. It's a slightly centre shafted uh, blade type putter. And now we can see uh, the Ben Sayers bird that I talked about earlier. As I say, this putter was in production for a long, long time. I think there were hickory versions of it. Um, it's a very uh, popular style. Sometimes the it's a heel um, uh the hosel connects to the heel so it's a heel shafted putter this one is slightly um, center shafted and the sole on most of them is uh, a grooved sole and uh, sometimes they'll actually say groove sole uh, on the um, the back of the putter spelt g-r-u-v-s-o-l uh, <coughs> so that's uh, the putter very uh, simple design um, and simple is often the best i find as far as the shaft goes no marking and it's a slight pistol grip pretty old but you don't need a firm grip on a putter anyway so i'm quite happy to leave that on there all right that's the putters and that completes the review of the irons for today's uh, few holes 
There's much to be said on the subject of Ben Sayers, far more than this video's got time for, so I'm going to limit myself to a very short overview and then focus on a Ben Sayers catalogue from 1964, followed by the iron model in today's video. Ben Sayers was born in 1856 in Leith, Edinburgh. Before embarking on his golfing career, Ben Sayers had trained to be an acrobat, and his height, who was 5 feet 3 inches tall, was probably an advantage in this profession. It wasn't until he, until he was 16 years of age that he began to concentrate on golf, and despite his lack of stature, he was soon more than able to hold his own against all comers. It's related that his acrobatic skills were often put to good use when he would celebrate holding an important putt by turning several cartwheels across the green, something that unnerved his opponents, I'm sure. Initially, the business was known for good quality golf balls, and Ben Sayers also had a fine reputation as an instructor. Club repair and production was a lesser part of the business in the early years, but around 1910, golf clubs started to become the main product. Hickory clubs from Ben Sayers are fairly easy to find, although the iron heads are often forged by Tom Stewart or Gibsons. In 1913, Ben Sayers Jr. joined the business, and by 1934, the demand for Ben Sayers brand was growing, so much so that the business moved to a new factory, also in North Berwick. Ben Sayers came up with many innovations, among them were the first dreadnought drivers, which were an oversized uh, driving club. In addition to their oversized heads, they also had very whippy shafts. And an edition of the American Golfer magazine from 1909 quoted a golfer describing a dreadnought driver as a lump of wood attached to three and a half feet of seaweed. Among other innovations was the groove sole, which was designed to keep the head of the club on a straight line. Um, but of course, the, the club head had to be on the correct uh, line in the first place for that to be of benefit. I now want to focus on some pages from an old catalogue. I think this dates from 1963, based purely on this uh, catalogue 4 stroke 63. We've also got a nice picture of a hand forger working on an iron head. The first page of interest is this one, advising the customer how to order clubs. And particularly further down on the page, we can see the standard lengths for clubs. It's interesting to note that a men's driver was 43 inches and a 5 iron 37. This section on club care is interesting too. Particularly the advice never to use head cores on woods unless conditions are perfectly dry. Next up, some comments from satisfied customers. You might need to pause the video if you want to re read these. Followed by a sample of some clubs for sale, starting with crown irons, which are very similar to the 05064 irons I'm using today. And then the very interesting anti-shank models. You can see two variations, one with a bent hosel and the other just with a very forward leading edge. Here are the Benny Putters available at the time, the centre shafted, or mallet as they stamped it, and the heel shafted original. This would be a good time to have a quick look at the Benny Putters. This hickory version shows the earlier upright bird cleat mark, whereas this later version, as I used in the video, shows the smaller squatter bird, often referred to as the robin cleat mark. And finally, this uh, Benny Putter, probably one of the last produced, has lost all bird marks completely. Still on the subject of putters, the unusual design rolling and some hickory reproduction putters, which can confound the unwary collector. I was delighted to find the Exploder Niblick in the catalogue, the same as the model I'm using today. And it's interesting if we pull up the lengths of shafts table I showed earlier, we can see that the 33 and 7 8 inches of the club I'm using does indeed confirm itself as being a ladies model at 34 inches in the catalogue. Well, I think we've seen enough of the catalogue now, so let's take a quick look at some earlier versions of the 05064, starting with this crest, which is a coated shaft model, so 1930s I would guess, then this crown version as depicted in the catalogue, and the Ben Sayers 64, very little change to the crown. 
the 05064 as we featured in this playing video. Ben Sayers are now owned by the Tandem Group and production was moved to China in 2003. But the company is still in, in existence and selling golf clubs so I suppose we, we should be thankful for that. Right, time to get out onto the course and as usual here are the lofts for the clubs particularly noticing the irons. I did do a little experiment here. If you watched the previous video, it was on Greenway clubs, and I played the Ben Sayers uh, and the Greenway clubs in the same round. So immediately after playing a few holes with the Greenway, I switched to the Ben Sayers just to see if it would have any detrimental effect on my play. Um, and there's a small summary at the end of this play section where I come to the conclusions. And now I've come up behind the four ball um, and don't look like they're going to let me through in any hurry. Um, but it's time to change clubs now, so I'm moving from the Greenway to the Ben Sayers. Well, that was a decent enough shot, finding the left side of the green. That pin high. Left me a, a birdie opportunity. Which I left slightly short, but an easy purple. On to the next, and I'm taking a driver. I actually missed a couple of holes um, because of the slow four ball I mentioned previously. And I then smash this one way out to the right. So far right, it goes off my hole diagram. And I find myself on the first hole. Where I hit a six iron, I think it was. Pretty good strike. But it rolls out to the back of the green. So I've left myself this uh, long put. Which I'll roll all the way uh, past the hole and almost off the green. The next one is close enough for a straightforward tap in for a bogey. Well, this par five is probably the only chance I'll get to hit my one iron. So here we go. Cut across it a bit so it faded down to the right rough, but not a bad shot. That went just over 210, got 300 to go, sat down a little bit. I'm going to try a six iron, might be a bit ambitious. Point just over. 140 yards, it's left me 157 to the middle, 140 to the front, and I'm going to hit the 7-9 again. Cutting across it again, I think I must have left the face wide open because that one sliced miles to the right and left me down in the dell. You can barely see me on this shot, and I'm hitting the exploder. Not a bad effort uh, for me, and the ball gets onto the green, leaving me uh, an uphill putt. So that's four to here. Should make a bogey from there, but let's see what happens. Just run it two or three feet by. Oh, didn't see that one coming. Oh, that one. Don't you just love a four put? 
Run to the last hole, another par three. Reasonable strike with the six iron, just pulled it a little bit to the left and left myself not a very nice lie on a down slope and trying to get this one onto the green with the exploder. Always a big ask with my short gain skills and I've got it onto the edge. Right, with the putter. And not a bad effort. I should make that one. Yep, another bogey. To summarise the play, I had one par, two bogeys and one treble bogey. Mainly brought on by that dreadful four put. I only hit one green in regulation and I had ten puts in total. I said at the start I was going to compare the effect of changing uh, clubs halfway through a round. So here's my uh, findings on that. Well, what can we take from that not very scientific experiment? Uh, I think play-wise there wasn't a lot to choose between the two sets. Um, the blades were pretty similar really. Uh, the greenway is probably slightly shorter but I still managed to hit those okay and I transitioned very smoothly. The biggest difference was in the puts, um, caused mainly I would say by a couple of freaky holes. The uh, third hole that I played with the greenway where I uh, duffed a couple of chips and then chipped in resulted in zero puts. So total puts for the four holes with greenway was six. With the Ben Sayers Benny, uh, I had that abomination on the third hole that I played where I took four puts. Uh, I actually thought that I hit a very good put for the second one which was about three feet away possibly, less than that maybe, but it just seemed to uh, dive to the side. Now, whether that was um, because I twisted the club or a slight imperfection in the green, the greens are starting to have a few more bumps in them now, who knows, but I missed the next one which was totally my fault um, and I ended up with that four put. So that gave me ten puts with the Ben Sayers set. I've not added up the total scores yet. Um, I think the greenways will be ahead, primarily because of the birdie that I had, and also the four put, which resulted in what would that be? That would be an eight on the par five um, for the Ben Sayers set. So there we go. Nothing between the clubs, and as far as I'm concerned. Uh, a player of my ability, it doesn't make any difference. I'm not good enough to be able to differentiate between sets of clubs um, that it's going to make any noticeable difference to my score. It's much more down to my um, inconsistency and how I strike each shot. Well, there we go. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and recommend to a friend. Hope to see you next time.